Hi guys and welcome to Heidi's Fish Tank. Today I wanted to do a video all about saltwater fish that I would not recommend for beginners that beginners typically want. Um, so these are kind of just the top five off the top of my head. One of them I have been guilty of. Um, and we're gonna start with that one. So number five is a copper band butterfly. Honestly, butterfly fish are really difficult. Most of them are not reef safe. The copper band is particularly popular because it eats Aptasia and of the butterflies, it's one of the ones that is most likely to be reef safe. And honestly, in my opinion, it's one of the most beautiful ones. The problem is that they typically starve in captivity and they don't ship well. So a lot of times, um, they will have internal bruising and bleed internally and die, or will have damage to their mouths uh, during the shipping process. And it's very, very hard to get them to survive. So it's really important when you're looking at copper band butterflies that you consider getting one that is very actively eating, which is what I did. And I thought I was avoiding a lot of the problems that's typically associated with them because I've always heard that 90% of the problem is getting them to eat. I had a copper band that was eating flake food. But the problem is they're still really sensitive and a lot of times you'll have one that's eating really well and it will still end up dying. Um, and I've noticed, I've never read this anywhere, but I've noticed that a lot of them are really prone to lymphocytes, which people often mistake for ick, but they're like these little white nodules that grow on their fins. Um, and unfortunately when it comes to lymphocytes, there's no real treatment. Some people will cut them off, but there's nothing you can really do. It's not like ick or brooklynella or something where there's a medication that you can give. So that's another reason. It just seems that all the ones in my local stores tend to have it. That being said, even if you can get one that is eating well, oftentimes it's just a matter of time before it dies. I was listening to a really interesting magna talk all about butterflies, which I will link down below if I remember to, or if not, you can just search it. But um, butterflies are a tricky, tricky creature. And it's unfortunately, it's unfortunate because they are my absolute favorite. So I had a butterfly, it was eating flake food. It died anyways. So I won't be doing that again. Uh, number four is a Moorish idol. These aren't in any particular order. I just have kind of like thought of them this morning. Um, Moorish idols are super popular. They are absolutely beautiful. If you've never seen one before, they look like Gil. Um, Gil on Finding Nemo was a Moorish idol. And his whole thought process of trying to get back to the ocean is absolutely accurate. Moorish idols do horribly in captivity. Of the things on my list, I think that they are probably the least ideal candidate for captivity. Um, and I've seen some videos, like I've seen a video of um, Paul Talbot from Majestic Aquariums that says they do better if you have a few of them, but they're also quite big, so I can't imagine how one would keep a few of them. Honestly, if you're thinking about doing a Moorish Idol, there's another type of butterfly. I believe it's called the Banner Butterfly. They're a little hardier than the um, copper bands. They look very similar and uh, they're much more likely to survive in your tank. So I would avoid getting gill. Um, another solution, by the way, is if you have kids, you can get yourself uh, like a four-stripe damsel or three-stripe damsel or get like a Bangai Cardinal and tell your kid it's baby gill which is what we did with an Azure Damsel instead of getting Dory. Which brings me to number three, uh, tangs. Of the things on my list, this is probably the best fish for a beginner, um, just because tangs can be quite hardy, especially uh, yellow tangs in particular can be quite hardy. The problem is that most people just don't have a big enough tank when they're a beginner. Most people start out with a nano tank. I don't recommend starting out with a nano tank, but most people do. Um, and tangs, the very smallest species, need at least a four foot aquarium. And those are small species. I'm talking about like coal tangs and other bristle tooth tangs like tamini tangs and that kind of thing. Most people are like, let me get dory. Um, and that thing gets a foot long. Uh, you want a huge tank and most beginners just aren't gonna have a big enough tank for them. That being said, they also can be kind of aggressive and they're prone to ick. That being said, tangs are pretty hardy. 
And so if you have a big enough tank, something like a yellow tang or like a coal tang is a good fish. It's a good fish for starters. But I would want to add it last to my fish plan because they are a little bit aggressive. So, you know, and that's just some thoughts on tangs. Um, and I definitely think like a, a tamini tang or a coal tang could be okay. But you just, you have to have a big enough tank for them and most people don't. Number four is going to be a mandarin, particularly, uh, yeah, the mandarin dragonettes. Um, these guys can be really good fish, and uh, if you have a big enough system and an old enough system, and that's the key. And that's why I say they're not for beginners, simply because they should not be the first fish in your tank. They survive mainly off of copepods. Every once in a blue moon, you can find one that is living on prepared food, and they have just started captive breeding them, so that is a way to go. But still, I would not recommend it as one of the first fish in your tank. And so by the time you get it, I hope you aren't a beginner anymore. Um, I'd recommend a refugium. You're probably going to want to add pods to your tank, even if you can find one that is eating prepared foods, uh, just because they need those copepods to survive. And those things will grow in your tank eventually. Um, but just wait until you have a really well-established tank before you get a mandarin. It's on my fish plan. I'm, I'm definitely planning on getting one, but not until the tank is, it'll be the very last fish that I end up getting. And the last fish that often is bought, but I would not recommend, um, are cleaner wrasses. Uh, cleaner wrasses, they're really cool. They're these little like blue and black striped wrasses. And what happens is people often get them because they make a great symbiotic relationship. They will eat parasites off of the other fish. They do not fix ick. A lot of people buy them because they have ick in their system. If you want to know more about ick, I did a video about hyposalinity that I'll link down below um, as well. Maybe I won't because I'm recording on my phone, but if I remember, I will link that. Um, but the problem is that cleaner wrasses often end up starving, which seems to be a common theme with all the fish on this list, or most of them. Uh, cleaner wrasses, yeah, they'll help with parasites and that kind of thing, but they don't have great survivability long term. I know people that have had them do okay long term, but typically they don't. So if you're considering a cleaner wrasse, I would highly recommend um, either cleaner shrimp or I really love a neon goby. And the nice thing about neon gobies is they are almost the same coloration. Um, the stripe is just a little bit backwards, but they're that blue and black stripe. They are captive bred. I don't even know if you can get them wild caught anymore. So they're super hardy. They make a great, great, great beginner fish and they will take prepared foods. So not only will they clean your fish, they will also take prepared foods. Um, and they're little, they have very little bio load. So they're really great if you have kind of a smaller tank like a lot of newbies tend to have. Uh, so I am a huge fan of the Neon Gobi. You can also get a uh, cleaner um, shrimp and stuff, but I would recommend cleaner goby over a cleaner wrasse. So those are kind of the ones that I woke up this morning thinking, hey, probably shouldn't do those as a beginner. Um, and honestly, I wouldn't do the Moorish Idol ever at all. <laughs> so um, I'd love to hear from you guys down below. What were some fish that you wanted to do and decided not to do? Or maybe you made the same mistake I did with the butterfly and thought, oh, it won't happen to me. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. And um, I'm actually really excited because we're going to be upgrading my mom's saltwater tank and possibly upgrading my saltwater tank uh, coming up here pretty soon, which I know I don't think I've ever even like really shown you guys my tanks. They're just fowlers, um, fish only with live rock, nothing, no coral or anything like that. But eventually I might get over my fear and add coral. So let me know in the comments what corals are really easy. I've heard green star polyps and zinnia are super duper easy for beginners. I also know that this is like getting way off topic, but I also know that zoanthids tend to be pretty good for beginners, but I'm scared of the palytoxins. So anyways, those are my top five fish, uh, saltwater fish that beginners should typically avoid. Again, the dragonette you can probably get eventually, especially if you can find one on prepared foods. Tangs, 
definitely if your tank is big enough. I just typically you don't see people who are just starting out with large enough tanks. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Um, anyways, I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I will talk to you when I talk to you. Hit the bell so you don't miss it. Bye guys.